Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite home inspection tools, which is a two lead electrical tester. So what makes me think of this is that I wrote a blog post and published it just recently with my list of home inspection tools for all of the home inspectors at Structure Tech. I didn't make a video about it because it just didn't seem like it translated very well into a video type of post. But I published a long list of all these tools and one of them that I just kind of glossed over I mentioned is having a two lead electrical tester that I carry around in our tool pouch at all times. And I didn't really get into why I think this specific tester is so great. Now just recently I made a video explaining how to test two 40 volt receptacles receptacles for things like clothes dryers and ranges, things like that. And I had mentioned using a, a, a two lead tester, it looks like this. It's got these different lights on here. Uh, th these are fine, but it's kind of big, it's kind of bulky. And really what I prefer when I think about using a two lead tester for just about everything else is this tiny little thing. This particular one, it's, it, it happens to be my favorite shape and size of a two lead tester. There's a bunch of them out there. This one is the uh, the GB Get-3100. Gardner Bender makes this one. And what what's nice about this, it's got this little neon bulb. It takes basically no electricity. I say basically. It takes a very, very small amount of electricity to get this thing to light up. Um, and so I'm gonna just pop this out of the package here. We'll talk about this a little bit here. You've got two leads. You've got the light on one side. It's, it's just a little bit thicker here and it will detect voltage. If I stick this into an outlet, well, let's demonstrate here. I'm going to stick one side into the hot slot. We'll take the other lead and we'll stick it into the neutral side. Lights up the circuit. If we leave the one lead in the hot side and we plug it into the ground, that should also complete the circuit. And then, just out of curiosity, if I wanted to make sure that the receptacle was grounded and let's say it was a two-prong receptacle, I could take that other lead and I could just touch the screw on the outlet and that would also light it up. Let's say I wanted to make sure that, say, a light switch was grounded. I could do the same thing, but I'd have to figure out a way of touching the one side to a hot wire. This is also handy if I've just got wires hanging out somewhere and I want to check to see if there's voltage there. Now, I could use my voltage detector. I've blogged about those before. I've made video posts about voltage detectors or voltage sniffers, I sometimes call them, or more technically, we would call it a non-contact voltage detector. It's these things that you wave around and then they start beeping and they light up when they detect voltage. However, they will give you false positives. As I have demonstrated on my video, I can take a wire that definitely does not have current on it, I can wrap it around a live wire a couple of times, and then I get my voltage detector close to it, and it tells me there's voltage there, even though there's not. So voltage sniffers do not confirm the presence of voltage. They only confirm that you may not have voltage. That's all they do. But these two lead testers, these contact testers, these are good for confirming that you truly do have voltage somewhere. So I love carrying this around in my tool pouch. I don't always use it during home inspections. In fact, I usually don't use it during home inspections, but there's no substitute for this. Uh, it, it does come in handy. Not only that, but if I'm inspecting an older house that has two prong outlets, how else are you gonna test them? It's great to have one of these things. Now, okay, there is a way to test them. You could carry around a two-prong outlet adapter and then plug your three-prong tester into it, but that, that's clunky. I love this little thing. Not only that, but this two-lead tester does not need batteries. It's always going to work for you until you break it. So that's why I love the two-lead tester. This was just a follow-up to that tool list. And I, I could sign off now, however, if you want to, just, just stick around. I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do with this sometimes. This is not a trick that I'm gonna advocate. I once wrote a blog post about this. Man, it must have been about 10 years ago or so. And I had this electrician's discussion board get super all up in arms with me about this. 
So now I'm, I'm stepping into territory where people are gonna get angry, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm, I'm gonna talk about this because it's a trick that I would always use as a home inspector. And again, I'm not telling you to do it. Maybe you could get shocked or killed if you do this. So I'm not advocating this, but this is what I used to do. An old school home inspector once taught me this trick. He said that these testers have this tiny little neon bulb in here and it takes so little to light this up that what you can actually do is you stick one end into the hot slot on your outlet and if it's, if it's dim, now this isn't gonna work very well if it's like outside and you got full daylight, it's just, it, it's gonna wash it out. But if it's a darker room where you kind of cup your hand over this, you can stick one lead into the hot slot on an outlet and then you touch the other one with your finger and it'll actually light up. As you can see, my body has a little bit of capacitance. I'm not grounding it, I'm not completing a circuit. My body has a little bit of capacitance and it makes that light light up when I touch it with my bare finger. And if I wanna get really crazy, I could ground my body. I could touch the screw on a nearby box and I could really make that light light up. Now, technically, I think I'm getting shocked when that happens, but there is so little going through me, there's so little needed to make this neon bulb light up that I don't feel anything. Now, if you, I, and I'm, I'm warning you because this could be dangerous. If you're using a tester like this, it's not gonna work. You need that little neon bulb. This tester will not do the same thing. If you try that little trick that I'm talking about, you do one of these and you try touching your finger to the end and you touch the screw on a box or something, you're gonna get shocked. It's, uh, it is very different. And I don't expect anyone to know the difference between these things. That's why I'm saying don't do as I do. However, I've been doing it for a long time and I, I will regularly go around with this thing and I'll just kind of have one of these leads in my palm and I will stick this in and I look carefully and I can see if there's, if there's juice there. So it's one more way that I use my two lead tester. Okay, that wraps it up. Uh, please don't send me any hate mail. <laughs> I think I gave enough warning on this one. Uh, but if you stuck around to the end, thank you so much for watching. Take care.